Hello, welcome back to class. We're going to continue with our series on finding Christ in the ancient tabernacle of Moses. And today we're going to talk more specifically about the wearing of vestments. You'll recall that we talked about vestments clear back in Genesis chapter 3, where Adam and Eve were dwelling in that garden naked, and yet they were not ashamed. Then, succumbing to the temptations of Lucifer, they partook of the forbidden fruit and fell. Then, realizing their nakedness, they were shamed, and they went and hid in the trees of the garden and tried to cover their nakedness with aprons made of leaves, but this was not sufficient. When the Lord called them forward, they were judged while standing there naked. Now the Lord taught them about the plan of redemption and that through him, they were going to be able to return to a, the state of paradise that they had enjoyed so much. And through him, they'd have the power to crush Lucifer's head. They were going to be able to crush death and live for eternity. Then, to reassure them, he gave them the grace and the gift of coats of skin. This had very special meaning. You'll recall that he took an animal at that time and sacrificed it, shedding its blood. And then from that animal, he made coats of skins and placed them on Adam and Eve. This object taught them the lesson that there would need to be a sacrifice of blood made in their behalf for their promised redemption to be realized. Now remember, the word to cover is kafar, spelling as C-A-F-A-R. It not only means to cover, but it means to atone. So the intent of this object lesson was to teach Adam and Eve that these coats would cover their nakedness and yet remind them that Christ would come down and atone them for their sins and they were going to be able to enjoy eternity in his presence. We quoted Isaiah 61 and verse 10. This is where Isaiah refers to these coats of skins as being the garments of salvation. Now, we also talked about the parable of the wedding supper. You'll recall there was a great king who had made a banquet for his son to celebrate his marriage. He had already invited his rich and wealthy guests, and he sent his servants out to bid them come to the wedding supper. But they all declined, and none of them accepted the invitation. The king was outraged. And he sent the servants back out on the streets looking for anyone they could find, be they good or bad, and invite them come to the wedding. And thus he filled the banquet with wedding guests. But when the king entered, he saw one who had not on a wedding garment. He went to him and asked him, friend, how did you come in here not having a wedding garment? He then had his servants cast that man out into outer darkness. Why? Because he, didn't, he was not covered by the atonement of Christ. What a beautiful way of teaching us the purpose of the investment, the vestments that we're asked to wear in some of our religious practices. So, we're back here at the tabernacle. It's completed now, and we're going through the process of preparing Aaron and his sons to enter in and to begin a new era of worship for the children of Israel. In the last class, we talked about the washings and how they were brought to the gate of the temple and immersed in water, practicing this object lesson to teach them that they needed to be made 
mature before they could enter into the holy places of the tabernacle. While at the gate, the following also happened, and this will be found in Exodus chapter 28, verses 40 through 41. We read, And for Aaron's sons thou shalt make coats, and thou shalt make for them girdles, and bonnets shalt thou make for them, for glory and for beauty. And thou shalt put them upon Aaron thy brother and his sons with them, and shall anoint them, and consecrate them, and sanctify them, that they may minister unto me in the priest's office. I can't emphasize enough how holy and sacred the grounds and the tent of meeting were. Again, I'm reminded of Moses standing on Mount Sinai before that burning bush and the Lord telling him to remove the shoes off of his feet because the ground that he stood upon was holy ground. Now, Aaron was the high priest. He had a very special duty of once a year on the Day of Atonement. You might know it as Yom Kippur or Yom Kafar. Aaron would come and he would repurify himself by washing being clothed in his vestments, being re-anointed, offering the blood sacrifice. And he would take the blood from the sacrifice and the ashes from the altar of sacrifice, and he would enter into the Holy of Holies. This room represented God's dwelling place. In it were found the Ark of the Covenant and the Mercy Seat. This is where the pillar of fire, or the Shekinah cloud of glory, would descend from heaven and rest upon, that in essence was God's presence. It was there that Moses would go in and talk to the face, with, talk face to face with the Lord, as one friend talketh to another. Again, the high priest is the only one could, that could enter the Holy of Holies, and he could do that only on one day of the year and only after being personally sanctified and ceremonially sanctified. So these are the extra vestments that were placed upon Aaron. And he put upon him the coat and girded him with the girdle and clothed him with the robe and put the ephod upon him. And he girded him with the curious girdle of the ephod, and bound it unto him therewith. And he put the breastplate upon him, and he put in the breastplate the Urim and the Thummim. And he put the mitre upon his head also, upon the mitre, even upon his forefront, did he put the golden plate, the holy crown, as the Lord commanded Moses. That's in Leviticus chapter 8, verses 7 through 9. And we know that golden plate placed on the front of his mitre had the words holiness to the Lord written upon it. You may have seen the religious Jews and the Orthodox Jews wearing shawls underneath their clothing that have the fringes that hang down below them. They actually do this in obedience to a commandment from God. We're going to turn to the book of Numbers, chapter 15, and read verses 37 through 41. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and bid them that they make them fringes in the borders of their garments throughout their generations, and that they put upon the fringe of the borders a ribband of blue. And it shall be unto you for a fringe, that ye may look upon it and remember all the commandments of the Lord and do them, and that ye seek not after your own heart and your own eyes, after which ye used to go a-whoring, 
that ye may remember and do all my commandments and be holy unto your God. I am the Lord your God, which brought you out of the land of Egypt to be your God. I am the Lord your God. So notice.